happy Mother's Day, everyone. <laughs> it's a weird one this year because a lot of us can't really do the things that we want to do because we're isolating. Some of you might not even be seeing your mums or children, and that's super sad. Um, so it's going to be a weird day. It's certainly... It's, it just feels weird because, like, we're really limited on what we can... <laughs> Thank you. I'm oh, like an orange in a cup. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we're really limited in what we can do um, this year. <laughs> yeah, some of you won't be able to do the things that you want to do. So it's going to be strange. Um, it's going to be a strange day. But I really hope all my um, mummy friends and my wider kind of network of um, mums out there who watch my videos I really hope you're having a good day and I hope that you can find something in the day to do that you like to do whether it's kind of having some you time to read a book or listen to a podcast or just spend some time with your family whatever you're going to be doing today I really hope you can make the best of it and have a really good day and I hope that you at least have a bit of cake or chocolate or something which I'm planning on doing later so I wanted to do a series of videos for those who are isolated and with the toddlers and maybe you're looking for some kind of activities to do with them, things to keep them um, yeah. learning yeah. and engaged. Yeah. It's stark. Oh no. What should we do? Yeah, so some really simple activities that you can do in your home um, that don't really cost anything and they're just really simple learning opportunities. So being a childminder, I'm kind of used to being at home with the children um, and we kind of set up activities, thank you, <laughs> daily um, um, and I'm used to the whole kind of learning process and thanks, I'm going to run out of space in a minute. Wow, so many oranges. Thank you so much. I um, can't remember what I was saying now. Okay. Um, yeah, so oh. Oh. some of you might, <laughs> might not be used to, um, if, if the child goes to the nursery or child mind, you might not be used to spending much time kind of setting up activities for them and that kind of thing. So um, I just wanted to kind of say, it really doesn't have to be complicated. We want to keep it really simple. I don't like anything complicated or that costs a lot of money or, you know, that yeah, where you have to buy a lot of stuff. So I'm going to keep it really simple um, and I'm going to group it into different learning areas. So today's video is going to be on colours. So if you've got a toddler that is into uh, colour recognition um, and is starting to learn, <laughs> learn colours, um, then this will be the video for you. Orange. Um, so the first um, activity around colours is a colour hunt, I guess. Um, so we use like, we do nature hunts quite a lot, um, but you can do kind of a finding and um, hunt kind of activity for colours as well. Um, so I've, I've shown these in a previous video. Um, it comes in a little bag like this. It's a pack of cards and they all have different things for, the, for a child to find. But inside them, they also have colours as well. We've got lots of different colours, but I'll just show you these two. Um, you can make these yourself if you don't have any flashcards or this type of, type of thing in the house. Or you can just, yeah, I mean, if you've got a printer, you can print off something like this. Or you can um, just find some coloured card or paper and just cut it out so they can see the colour on there. You can write on the name of it if you want to, so they can start to kind of recognise that word and then all you do is you kind of give them a card and get them to find colours that match the card around the home so it literally costs nothing and it's a really fun activity for them to kind of engage with their environment um, it's a sensory activity as well so it's getting them looking around and finding uh, particular colours and if they're items that they can bring to you then you can also look at different shades because if with orange you know you've got like this kind of orange and then there'll be other shades of orange you can talk about all the different shades and you can even categorize them from like light to dark or whatever really so there's kind of it goes from simple to kind of more complex and you can kind of build on that activity to make it more interesting or to kind of include more learning opportunities 
So the second one is an activity that we did earlier in the week and it was really, really fun. It was um, like a colour mixing activity and we used water, um, some food colouring or you can use paint. So you need something to colour the water. Um, so either option would work really well. And then we used some really thick kitchen roll and a little pipette as well. So that might not be something that you've got, but you, do, you don't need it. You can use a brush or anything really. Um, so yeah, what we did is I set up different coloured pots, just primary colours. Um, and then they used the pipettes to kind of pick up the coloured water and mix it with the other colours. And then the kitchen roll, they can kind of drop the water on there and see how it blends and mixes in and how the water moves. And it looks really, really cool. They really enjoyed mixing the colours and then we were talking about what colours they made um, and they were kind of recognising the colours as they were mixing. Um, and it was just really fun. And I find anything water-based, anything that involves water, toddlers absolutely love because they love water. So yeah, and it's particularly pretty much mess free as well so you don't have to do it outside you can do it inside as well but yeah if you don't have a little pipette to kind of pick, pick up the water then you can use a brush so they can dip the brush and then the droplets um, of the water you can use to make the kind of colour stain on the, um, on the kitchen wall <laughs> that is another kind of colour eye matching kind of recognition mixing blah 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 uh, activity that you can do in the house so if you've got a toddler that's at the kind of stage of just recognising colours now, um, one thing that the children started to doing, um, started to do off their own kind of back really, which is the best way, if the child starts showing an interest, it's the best way to kind of, for them to learn because it's something that they're interested in and they're engaged in already. So if you can pick up on little things that they're showing an interest in, you can kind of build on those and extend their learning. So yeah, I noticed they were they were comparing colours in their clothes each day. So my child-minding uh, child would come in a blue top, and then they'd be like, "Oh, I'm wearing blue, and you're wearing pink," and then they'd point to me and pick up on what I'm wearing. Um, but yeah, it's a really good way to kind of for them to build on learning those colours, um, and it's right there in front of them. Um, and it's quite fun to compare as well. So you can, in the morning when they get dressed, get them more interested in what they're wearing and you can get them to choose the colours that they want to wear and then you can kind of compare them with what you're wearing and you can talk about, I'm wearing pink today and what colour is this and you know, this colour is much brighter than your colour and it's just another kind of uh, language opportunity and just to get them interested in, in colours and um, noticing colours you know, around them and in their environment. So I know it probably sounds a bit like uh, lame, like that's not a real activity, like why are you even recommending that? And I promise I'm not trying to pop you off, um, <laughs> but honestly the most simple things are the most effective and um, children learn in a really simplistic way, so you don't need to overcomplicate it when it comes to learning particular things. Um, I always recommend picking up on their interests, you know, first. I'm probably not trying to pop you off with like a made up rubbish activity because it, it, the kids really enjoy it and um, and it's really fun so yeah give that a try. So the last one if you've ever I don't know if you've ever heard of like a mystery bag or like a treasure bag and they use them a lot in Montessori. Usually it's a bag and it's filled with some random objects and it's more of like a sensory activity so a child will put their hand in they'll try and figure out what's in there before they pull it out and then it's kind of using all their senses to kind of um, recognise what it is. Yeah, what did you say, Baba? You want to do your video? You want to do a video too? You can be in Mummy's video if you like. You can also do this kind of like treasure bag, um, mystery bag with colours as well. Um, so you can put lots of items in the bag and then pull out, um, they can reach their hand in, pull out an item and then they can talk about what colour it is. And you can also then group them. So if you had maybe baskets with like a coloured card in there, they know which, which basket to put them in as they pull them out. Or you can just lay them out, you know, in, in a, on a mat or something, um, or a piece of paper and they can put it on the paper, you know, when they find um, where it goes. 
Um, so really simple activity and you'll find if you've never done um, like a treasure bag before I would totally recommend it or a mystery bag whatever you want to call it um, because children love it they love like they're so curious so if they see a bag um, that they can't see into they instantly want to know what's in there um, and they get really excited to kind of know what's what's hidden away. Yeah, we do mystery guys quite a lot. And as I said, it's, it's kind of a sensory um, exploration and, and development as well as kind of learning colors. So yeah, I definitely recommend that. It's really fun and really easy. And as I said, you can do it with anything that you find around the house. So it's not gonna cost you anything at all, which we love as mums. We don't wanna be spending a fortune on things. So that's it, four really simple color themed activities that you can do at home whilst you're isolated with your children. Um, really easy to set up. Uh, some of them don't even need setting up. It's literally just open your mouth and start talking about colours. <laughs> um, so yeah, hopefully that's helpful. I'm going to be posting um, three more videos based on different kind of indoor isolation activities that you can do with your toddlers um, over the next few days. And I'm going to group them into kind of learning categories. So the next one I think is going to be arts and crafts. And then I'm going to do a sensory one as well. Um, but yeah, look out for those and thanks again for watching. Um, if you're new, then don't forget to subscribe. Um, and I hope that you are all doing well in your kind of isolation journey. It's a weird experience for us all. But um, I hope you and your families are happy and safe and uh, making the most of it. Um, yeah, don't forget to comment if you've got any questions or if there's anything particularly you want me to do a video on, then do let me know. Say bye, me.